Don't have all the in-depth interview and then... Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Turn this nightmare, I just think. Well it is, but what this thing does... And this is the one of the best, just old fashioned cassettes, that's the best machine you can get. But what it does, I have no idea why it does this, is as the batteries run down, it's, it, it keeps going around when it's no longer getting any signal. So if you're not actually watching that, you're just sort of vaguely, oh yeah, it's still going, it's still going. And as you listen to the tape, it fades in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Get some tuber cells. Of course. Of course. <laughs> now. Long time ago. It's a long time ago. Yeah. And you see, you're still here. Yeah. Still got a band together. Yeah. That is impressive in itself. <laughs> it is quite impressive, actually. <laughs> and none of us have died or anything like that. <laughs> and a few lineup changes along the way, but yeah. You have, you have. Kind of last in the end. Keeps it all fresh. Uh, now, so we've got, we got two things really. We've got this week of gigs, we've got the singles album. Mm -hmm. The week of gigs, I like that, that's interesting. The idea of, um, who came up with that idea of doing the... We were arguing about this the other day, I, 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 it was sort of like a bit of a group thing, because we were talking about... We know we knew that a few people had done like their whole albums, like what did Brian Wilson do press and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I think we were talking about that, because we were talking about doing Dog Man Style um, out in a gig we did in uh, Denmark. And then we just said, why don't we just, when the Great Sits comes out, why don't we just do Five Nights and the whole back catalogue? And we thought, yeah, that's a really cool idea. And we hadn't played lots of the songs, uh, lots of the songs we're going to play, we've never, ne never ever played before. Not even once, not even as a band. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a couple of songs on head music that, were, that weren't recorded as a live band, they were recorded as, um, uh, you know, programming on computers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So <laughs> there's a couple of songs that have never actually been played on that, so it's kind of quite interesting. But as to who came up with the idea, that's probably me. No one else here, you can take credit. Exactly, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't hear anyone disagreeing with me. Now, it occurs to me that there must be songs on there that different people can't stand. On so the singles album? No, on, on the, if you go into the whole catalogue, yeah. all that can't stand, but the, the, the individual people don't really want to play it. Then. And it's, uh, it's interesting, because I mean, obviously you're going to have to... Um, you know, the gigs are sold out, and you're going to have fans who are going to laugh different nights. But you always think people go in bands to avoid having a proper job. And I just thought, it's one of those moments when actually being in the band is like going to work, because you're actually going to have to sit down and learn all these things. Without a doubt, yeah. And yeah. People, and you actually think, people think, oh, do we really want to play this one? Well, we've got to now, you know. It is a bit like that. I mean, luckily, we, we kind of, we, we know how to play most of the songs, because when we, when we tour, we always change the set list constantly. We're not one of these bands that does exactly the same set list. You know, even when we're doing festivals and stuff, we stick an occasional hard track in them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know you're totally right. There is, you know, there's a sense of, we haven't started rehearsals yet, but we are going to have to go down and, and actually, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, not so much me, because I'm just sort of singing, but yeah. I, I think, you know, it, it, ironically enough, the guy that's going to have to do the most work is Alex, and mm -hmm. he's the newest member, because he's kind of, yeah, he, he sort of, he, he kind of like plays the most intr instruments and tends to operate the samples and things mm -hmm. like that. So. Um, he's going to have the most work cut work, out. Work, uh, but um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of songs in there that, that, that you know, of course, in, in a, out of five albums worth of material, there's always going to be a couple of things that you think are all right or you don't like or whatever. But the whole point of doing this is that you do it all. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You go in there and you, and you play it all from start to finish and you kind of like you take the rough with the smooth. I think, you know, that, that is the whole point of doing this, that, mm -hmm. that it's not an edited. Um, Kind of delivery of your work, it's, it's very much a, a complete sort of thing of your work. There's a couple of songs, I mean, there's a song, there's a song Stay Together, which was like a single a few years ago, mm -hmm. which I, I don't really like, to be honest. Mm -hmm. A lot of our fans really like it. And for me, it's, um, it, it was probably the point for me where um, Sway were, were kind of becoming a bit of hype. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a word that's sort of like, was thrown at us a lot. But I think with that song, I, I think the hype sort of like propelled it to its chart position rather than the quality of the song. Mm -hmm. And I kind of I don't like it because of that. And it also reminds me of not the happiest time in the band. You know, Bernard was leaving the band, and mm -hmm. the band was was becoming very fractured. And um, it doesn't remind me of good times. Mm -hmm.
presumably this is going to be. Uh, it's, but you still put it on the uh, the singles. Yeah, but again, that's the whole point of this. The album is that it's a complete. It's, yeah. it's the singles. It's, it's not. It's not the best of. Because yeah. originally it was going to be the best of, and then yeah, you can you, be selective. And it's like uh, it's kind of like impossible. So then we said like it's just have the singles. It's, you know, it's impossible for me. A best of way we have to include our tracks and B sides, mm-hmm. yeah. and we just decided on the singles, and, and and we just said let's call it what it is. It's the singles. Mm-hmm. So there's no arguments there. That's good, that's good. Because I just REM have got a best of coming out in October and they, they, they haven't put Shiny Happy People on it. Right. Because they don't like the song and you can just imagine. Mm. I mean, that's just, you, you're great, you're, you're, you're a person who isn't going to buy an REM album but is going to buy a best of. Go pick that up and go, with that's yeah. the one I know. Yeah, you know? Sure. So that's a fascinating decision and you, yeah. you can imagine the conversations with the record company along the way. But yeah. Oh yeah, I like that singles. That's, um, that's it's just neat and simple, and it's deal. you know, yeah. it's it's, it's almost like saying, you know, it's not saying that this is what we think is our greatest at work. It's just saying this is what we've released as singles. And there you go, take mm-hmm. it or leave it, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a pretty good record actually. I think it's um, I quite enjoy listening to it. To be honest. And not done in, um, not done chronologically. No. It's very diff- a conscious decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna. Yeah, I kind of like thought that would be. I thought I, I, when I, when I first um, came up with the track list, and I was actually thinking of um, almost trying to arrange it like we would a, a set list, a live set list. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the initial concept. That when we when we play live, we kind of like it's a very carefully considered dynamic. It's always like you know it depends on the set, but you know the, the certain sets we do that you know you rock out for a few, and you, you take you, you take the audience through a journey. And I kind of wanted the same sort of sensibility going on with the with the track list and this. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we've ever played that set list, but no. it kind of sounded good as a. It sounded like a like a like a, a, a possible one. So that was that. No, I didn't really want to do a chronological one. That's kind mm-hmm. of like. I thought, I thought it was missing a trip, really. It's very interesting because listening to it like that, I think this is a compliment. I realise it could be taken the other way. Okay. But listening to it like that. You're not really conscious of oh yeah that's an early one that's a recent one that's it does it all fits together very yeah. well. I think it does. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like, I've kind of always been kind of quite aware of that. You know I think it was very much when Bernard left and Richard joined it was very much a sense of of, of you know wanting to sort of like you know, pick up the thread at the same point. The same point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a consistency in that, which is quite nice. I mean, it's kind of like some weird moments, you know, there's like inevitably some weird moments. I kind of like think I had to sort of rear. There was a point where we where we had Wild Ones, one of the early track listeners was Wild Ones going into Filmstar, mm-hmm. and it just sounded completely like a different band, but not in a good way. Mm-hmm. It just sounded weird. It, like, the vocal delivery in Wild Ones is very rich. Yeah. And then Filmstar came on, which was this very sped, nagging, uh, trebly little vocal, and it mm-hmm. just sounded odd having yeah. these two things together. Um, so yeah, there was a there was a there was a bit of that that bit of you know that uh, when. You know, we thought of that when we were actually track listing the album. You know, what would make it flow as a mm-hmm. as a as a as a piece? You know, together. It's interesting because you put because what separates them is obsessions, which is a, like a very recent. Album. Yeah. And it, I mean, I was actually at that point now. I'm listening. And it took me a second. I thought, God, that's off the last album, isn't it? Mm. You know, and you just think, oh, this is all. It's, it's a body of work, you know, mm-hmm. so, which is which is interesting because. When you, you know, as each album comes out, what people try and do is say, oh, this is their something album, this is their this album, this is, the, you know, it's like this one, you know, and it, it's interesting to see how well it fits together, because quite often singles albums don't. Yeah. I think that what's, what happened with Swade is that I think that, the, that there's a, is a very wide um, breadth of, of stars within Swade, but I think that what has tended to be chosen as singles is kind of like, you know, we do we do a certain sort of, there is a certain sort of sound to, the, to a, a Swade single, yeah. do you know what I mean? And so yeah. when you listen to a singles collection, it's, it's it, it, it sort of works more as a piece because of that. Mm. Because of course you've already done your B-sides collection. Yeah. Normally they come the other way. Yeah. I was just, I don't know, that was, that, that was an important thing for us to do. I just, after coming out, which is a sort of sold best out of all of our albums, I think there's a lot of people that had been introduced to Sway through coming out, and I kind of wanted to wanted to hear the other side of the band. Mm-hmm. And I was aware that you know, coming out sort of portrayed the band as very, I suppose, 
puffy in kind of like quite a one-dimensional way, which I was totally happy with because that's the nature of the album. That's mm -hmm. what's supposed to be a pop record. Um, and I kind of wanted people to hear the other side of the band, which you know has a, has a bit more depth. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of quite proud of the B-sides album as, a, as an album as well. I think it works. It's a double album which works, which is kind of. Mm -hmm. Kind of quite an achievement, I think. Yeah. I mean, there's a bit of dross in it, but you know, not too much. Yeah. It's not like Sounds and Ist or anything like that. You know. Well, I mean, you were you were definitely one of the bands. Certainly at the beginning, like I said, it gets harder as you get into this whole CD one, CD two. Fucking hell, tell me about it, yeah. But at the beginning, you know, it was one of those. It was all, like, you know, thank God, a band that does good B sides again. You know, well, it's like you know, kind of like the whole. I think formatting, the whole kind of like evil of formatting, is just really. It's just been really, really destructive of that whole kind of like ethos of bands releasing a, a, you know, a single which had good B-sides and, mm -hmm. and now bands, you know, bands like Suede or whatever, child bands, you know, in order to compete in the, in the charts you have to format your records. Mm -hmm. And we didn't format until I think our fifth or sixth single or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't really didn't want to, but in the end you just, you know, at the end of the day, people look at a chart position and they don't kind of care whether you format it or not. You know, it's one of those, it's one of those business things that you just inevitably get sucked into. Yeah. And it did, to be honest, yeah, you know, the, your quality control is, is automatically going to be reduced. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, singles, when you release three formats of a single, you're releasing like nine tracks per, per song. Mm -hmm. And if you're, not, if you're not doing remixes, which we don't do, mm -hmm. It's quite it's almost yeah, another it's album. Isn't it? I know. <laughs> it's really good album. And it is hard. Yeah. To get the quality control. But you know, the early singles, yeah, I think that they stand as they please mm. pretty well. And I think so the first the first sort of like four or five singles are, are pretty good EPs in their own right. Mm hmm And I suppose one of the reasons why this works is that um as you say, there's another side to the band, but you've always, you've always, you've been quite uh, that quite rare thing, which is the band that's quite happy to say we do pop music, you know, um, as opposed to uh, these singles things are beneath us and we don't. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, a lot of kind of like our contemporaries are sort of out of common. I just find I, I don't have a problem with pop music. I, I always find it a little bit sort of like. I don't know, it's just really pretentious when bands are kind of like, pretend that they're something else, you know. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really, you know, I, I, I think it's a, sort of like a very middle class trait as well. I kind of like grew up with pop music and, you know, I grew up with just listening to a tinny little transistor radio and all of my favourite records coming out of tiny little speakers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for that to work, you know. It has to be, the, 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 the songs have to be pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I think it's kind of sometimes, you know, it's not so much love of pop music, it's just love of songwriting more than anything. Mm -hmm. Which is the thing, I don't think an album like Dogman Star isn't, you know, it's obviously a, a, a big step away from pop music, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's kind of bordering on the avant-garde and it's, it's very grand and very um, ambitious. But um, it's still, I think the songs are still pretty good. But yeah, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with with calling a swider pop band at all. Hmm. I think what I mean, I could of course be completely wrong, but you don't get the feeling that this is a band where you deliver the album and then the record company goes, yeah, that's great, now I'm going to write a single. You know, you, you you get the feeling that you like writing the singles. You know, that it's part of the band and it's part of what you want to do, mm. and they just come out like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Yeah. So um, the. Uh, the week of gigs, it says on the press release, there's all these other things going on, there's exhibitions of the artwork mm, and... Mm, bits and pieces, who's, yeah. Who's kept all that? Uh, who's kept all the yeah, artwork? Yeah. Well, that's it. <coughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a big retrieval process at the moment. Charlie's, our manager's actually kind of got, he's today, he's gone over to Peter Savile's office and he's kind of like See digging through the archive. No one's kept it all, but we kind of like, you know, we're sort of just contacted people getting hold of things, do you know what I mean? So, I mean, if, if anyone's kind of like kept a, a record of the band, it's Simon the drummer. He's sort of, he's the, like the kind of archivist of the band. He, kind of like, he, he kept a diary for years and years, which is absolutely fascinating. But there's, there's a, 
there's a book called Love and Poison, which is like oh, I feel the band, I'm just reading through that, and a lot of the uh, Blokies. Yeah, David, David, yeah, David right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, some of the excerpts of Simon's Diary are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Does that exist? Is that apart from that book? Does that exist? Is it online, or is he is he yeah, published any of it, or it's just? Um, no, it still isn't kind of like finished. Finished. I've read like a you know rough copy of it, so I think it's, I think it's actually at the lawyers at the moment. I'm sure there's not too much live of the stuff in it. <laughs> How could that ever be? <laughs> well, it's very truthful. You know, it's like it, it it is it is the history of suede. I mean, the interviews that I did and the emails that I sent and stuff like that were me trying to be brutally honest about what happened mm -hmm. and actually cutting through the... Because it's sometimes funny, you know, things that happened nine, ten years ago, certain things kind of do become myths and you actually suddenly have to remember, did that actually happen or has that become mm -hmm. a little urban myth in the band? Do you know what I mean? I, think yeah. I was trying to cut through it all. And there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of drugs going on. It, it was, a, it, you know, and it, the last ten years have been pretty insane, and I was, I was actually trying to be quite honest about what I felt about things and actually what happened, and hopefully it is quite a, quite an accurate account of what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's sort of what's an all thing, you know. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not um, in lots of places. It's not particularly flattering. You know, David has, has known us for years, and there's lots of things about it that if I wanted, there's lots of things about it I didn't like. You know, mm -hmm. that I would have like not to have been in there but then I suddenly thought I'm not going to sit there with a red marker going through things I don't like because that's just it might as well be it, it's just become some powder puff piece of PR bullshit mm -hmm. you know I wanted it to be a warts and all thing and for in, order, in order for it to be a warts and all thing it's got you've got to take the rough with the smooth and so I didn't there's no changes I made to it so what's in there that you don't like there's lots of little bits and pieces that, you know what I mean that kind of like some, bizarre thing that some local journalist went into my dad's house and got hold of some essay I wrote when I was seven and it was like, <laughs> do you know what I mean, stuff like that, which is like me kind of like being a seven year old kid kind of moaning about something, I don't know, but it's just silly little which things like that. Which would be embarrassing to anyone. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, yeah, exactly, silly little things like that, you know, but it's mm. whatever, you know, um, it's fine. And there's lots of things about it which I've been, you know, I feel like look back and I kind of find difficult to actually read because it's like difficult, t difficult points in my life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think a lot, of, a lot of times I kind of like I'm not particularly proud of myself, but it's part of your life and you have to accept it. Mm collection and like I said before it's not my if it, this would these half of these songs in here wouldn't be what I consider the best of Swade mm -hmm. but there's a handful of them I think The Drowners um, Trash I really like that I like the lyrics and that especially in the melody yeah um, I think She's in Fashion as well 
Uh, I'm kind of quite proud of that because it doesn't. It, it was quite a successful musical departure. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of like a keyboard loop based thing, two chords. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas before we were kind of writing quite sort of like um, lots of chord changes and guitar based, rock based things. She's in fashion was, but it still managed to managed to sound like Sway. It didn't sound like a musical tourism to me. It was yeah. kind of like it's quite a, quite a successful musical piece. Um, and songs like Saturday Night as well, I think, are, are good. I think it's a good song, quite beautiful and quite poignant. Um, so I think there's lots of bits and pieces there I like. Stuff I don't like, not that keen on, um, on um, like I said, not that keen on Stay Together. I think We Are The Pigs is interesting at best. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, there's bits and pieces yeah. in there, but yeah, I think generally it's not bad. Mm -hmm. And what would be on the best of then? The best of Suede? Yeah. Um, and that isn't on there. Just I think from the first album, The Next Life. Mm -hmm. um, I think from the second album, um, mm, Two of Us. Um, from kind of. Uh, uh, from coming up, maybe She or Star Crazy. Um, from Head Music. Um, Indian Strings, mm -hmm. and from the last album, Lost in TV, and I think B-Sides, there's lots of B-Sides that will be on the best of. Mm. Um, the Big Time, High Rising, Killing of a Flash Boy, My Dark Star, Year of His Our Playground, Sound of the Streets, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's made a pretty good record. When you did when the B-Sides collection came out, did you do like a B-Sides concert? Yeah, we did one at the Forum, yeah. um, I think it was 97, which was, I think it was quite good, it was kind of quite bright, I think, as well. I'm not sure if anyone had done that before, but, <laughs> um, but it, I mean, uh, you know, the songs worked and I think it was quite a good moment. Oh, and I'd also put The Living Dead on there as well, mm -hmm. that but yeah, we have done that. It also says there's going to be at the ICA a suede, in, in the shop I think it says, a suede selection of books and films to buy. Yeah. What's this going to be? Um, it's just, uh, manager emailed me about it, so what are your favourite books to put in the, in the shop and then emailed him back a few books. Mm -hmm. It's things like The Outsider by Cameron and mm -hmm. Atomised by Michelle Welbeck and um, um, what else is in there? White Teeth and um, 1984, and just books that I've liked, or maybe that some way influenced the writing. Mm -hmm. And films? Films. Um, performance. <laughs> I thought you might say that. Which I've, I've seen uh, far too many times. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't ever need to see that again in my life. <laughs> so I think I watched it, mate. Uh, yeah, performance. I think there's, there's a night of films, which is just our favourite films, basically, you know, as mm -hmm. simple as that. And performance, um, Nuts in May by Mike Lee. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I forgot what else is it? The Idiots, uh, the last one true. Mm -hmm. um, Sleuth with Lawrence Olivia and Mark. Okay. Yeah, yeah, which is, I, if I had to name my favourite film of all time, that's probably it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I love that. If not especially suede like. Not particularly, no. But um, it's still a. There's something great about it. I love that. It's just great, isn't it? The way, the way that two people on the screen can be so compelling for mm. nearly two hours, you know. Fantastic. Michael Caine is just. covering it now. He is, yeah. Exactly. Did, did you ever see that? Uh, he did some like a masterclass, acting masterclass they showed on TV. And he was teaching quite well known actors, not they weren't like new, you know, they weren't like students, they were like theatre actors, mm -hmm. um, how to act on film. And it was absolutely fascinating. Really? Because it was all about just doing nothing. It was mm. all about staying very, very still, mm. not moving, not changing mm. what you're doing, not doing, you know, like that. And they couldn't do it. I mean, all the actors you'd recognise, you know, like that. And they mm. could, you know, give me these little exercises, you know, stand there as a camera, you know, just don't move for 20 seconds. <laughs> as simple as that. And they would, like, you know, say these lines, but don't change your expression. They couldn't do it. Mm. 
And then you he's left in the master of that, aren't Yeah, he? and it's absolutely, he's right, it's absolutely compelling to see somebody not acting, you know, yeah. doing all that stuff. Have you seen that film Tape? Um, it's, a, it's a quite a recent film, it's got that guy Ethan Hawke in it. Oh, that's oh, that, it was. It really reminds me of, of like an updated sleuth, it's just two guys in a room one accusing this guy of having raped someone when they were in college together. Yeah. But it's got a similar kind of dark yeah. sort of interplay going on. You know, there's yeah. the competition between two. It was worth checking out, actually. Yeah. The modern yeah, sleuth. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, the whole ICA thing, it kind of... Um, it's... Uh, it reflects the what's the right word to use? Um, I was going to say obsessive. That might sound like not quite what I mean, but the obsessive nature of your fans. Mm -hmm. If you don't, don't take that to be a pejorative term. No, I don't. Right? I know what you mean. It's, I wouldn't. It, it's obsessive in the sense that I think Sway fans tend to not treat our music as as kind of like you know like buying a pair of trousers or something like yeah. that. It's you know that it's very much. The, the hardcore and even the sort of you know, general fan base is sort of like I think very much immersed in the world of suede. Mm -hmm. I think we're a band that that does create a kind of like a, a microcosmic universe, yeah. mm -hmm. which I think is nice. Yeah. Always kind of like that. I've always wanted to mean something to people's lives rather than just being a nice little tune. Mm -hmm. you know, I think there's a there's there's a there's a, a, a kind of a suede army out there, kind mm -hmm. of like. United by their sort of dysfunctionalness, not belonging to any particular country, you know, just kind of. But they will rule the world, of course. <laughs> of course they will. That's what I'm. I'm pre-programming pre the brains via my music. It's a very technical, scientific, and sinister process. Because I mean, with my generation, it was David Bowie. Right. You know, and that was the, the person you were into, and you'd get, you know, you'd get beaten up at school or whatever by Led Zeppelin fans, you know. Right. And then, you know, 20 years later or whatever, you you run into all the people who run everything, you know, and they were all the David Bowie fans who got beaten up at school. Right. <laughs> all the people who edit all the magazines, all the people who publish all the magazines, all the people who run the TV stations, the whole media world is peopled by the other. So what happened to all the Led Zeppelin fans? Well, they're just um, boring they jobs. Die of alcoholism or something. Yeah, exa exactly, they're just, they're just, and they remember when they were, when they were in the school rugby team. <laughs> yeah, a brief moment of... Uh, there's definitely some truth in that, though. Well, that's, I think that's a, a good thing, though, isn't it? It's, mm. You know, people with taste having power mm. makes a change, doesn't it? Yeah. Huh? So, yeah, so the suede, the suede only will rule. But certainly they'll the rule the interesting jobs, if not the world. Good. So that's something to look forward to. Very yeah, so much looking forward <laughs> to that. <laughs> so, yeah. Which means, of course, that in you know, 20 years' time you can be Ozzy Osbourne. At home with the Andersons? Yeah. 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 There'll, always be, there'll always be a commissioning editor. Go, oh. God, I have that for Anderson. Well, I'm kind of hoping not to be as entertaining as him by the time <laughs> I'm sort of in my 50s because I think in order to be as entertaining as him you have to have destroyed most of your brain. Did you see the At Home of the Eubankses? Oh God, I really wanted to and I missed it. Mm. I find him fascinating. He is fascinating, but it wasn't as, as entertaining as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Well, he, is, he, is a, he is a completely unsympathetic character, mm. which is, makes, <coughs> makes it a problem for making a programme like that. But I mean, I think fascinating, but I assume most people turn off after a bit because there's nothing about him. Ozzy Osbourne is, it's got that Homer Simpson thing of well, yeah. well, you know, he's a jerk, but he loves his family, sort mm. of thing. You know, he's, mm. he's obviously, you know, underneath all that, you know, damage he's done to himself. He's, he's, he's a very, regular bloke. Very he's watchable got, as well, yeah. isn't it? It's like yeah. you kind of like you can't tear yourself away yeah. thinking, is this guy for real? You know what I mean? Whereas you can't identify with Chris Hume exactly. at all. You can't. Exactly. Get, he is, way does he do that? He is a bizarre man, isn't he? You know, the kind of like the, the melting pot that's gone to make him up. And, and, you know, good luck to him, you know what I mean? He isn't, well, he's done well, he's, a, he's done He's, he's broke done, the mould, you know? He's constructed something successful yeah. out of it, but you can't, you can't get into how did he become that? How, what? You can't really identify with him, though. Yeah, not like you can with Ozzy.
Uh, everyone's got a bit of the, the kind of like the brain dead idiot to the man. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, you can say that's that kind of like cartoon version of every man. That's sort of thing. not really. You know, yeah, I can't get my remote to work either. All right, I'm not as. You know. There's not many people that kind of identify with a kind of t- cane twirling, t- cane twirling, lisping, <laughs> lisping would be top, isn't it? Oh, no, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's quite an unusual role model to expect you to identify. You just can't see, especially as he has another image. You know, he has another option. If mm. I say he's someone who wants to stand out, you know, and he wants to be a person like that, well champion boxer that's it you've done it mm. you were a hard man you know exactly, you yeah. get respect from everybody just from the fact they all know you could beat them up mm-hmm. you know that's so he's already done it without any of the rest so that's what makes it even more weird that it, none of it was necessary you know drive around in a big car but he just I mean, you know, even credit he just wants to be himself and he's, he's fine with you know maybe he knows that he's that he's not a particularly cool person but he's totally happy mm-hmm with just being himself, you know, I think that's fine. Doesn't want to fit into the stereotypes that, that his professional music takes. That's true, that's true, that's possible. And you do talk about boxes, you can't stand the actual job. Hmm. So that's the side books in the films anyway, that's cool. And, uh, and this is the audience are going to choose choose the encores the, from the singles. Is that just from shouting it out, or is it going to be a little internet poll? Or I think what the idea is that they get presented <laughs> with a piece of paper at the start of the gig and right. fill it in. Right. But, um, not absolutely finalised yet. No, it's not finalised yet. And we are honestly going to play the songs that come top of the poll. <laughs> Right. No, I don't know. Well, I have to wait and see. I think it's just, you know, I mean, it's just like a way of, you know, we're gonna, the, the, the actual shows, are, because of the nature of what they are, they're going to be kind of quite showcasey. Yeah. It's not going to be a big jumping up and down fest because mm. you're playing lots of them are quite meditative songs and, you know, it's not like playing a festival. I think it'd be kind of quite nice to come back and do an encore and just rip it out. You know? And it's probably quite a long, I'm thinking you'd probably want to play quite a long encore as it were. Yeah. Or more of a second know. half as it were. Exactly. Yeah. And then you, are you going to play the albums in order? Um, that's the plan, yeah. yeah. Whether we end up doing all of them like that, I don't know. But definitely the first couple. Yeah. Probably should. And there's something nice about that, something yeah, kind of like, probably kind of right about it, just playing yeah. from start to finish. I'll use the toilet second if you want. So the singles are Man of the Gigs and this book as well. There's actually an awful lot of things going on that are very much, um, you must be sort of dredging up a lot of memories. Yeah. Does it, is there a sort of, um, Is it, is it, does it all, does the history all fit into phases? Is there a sort of a narrative to it as you remember it, or is it just a sort of ten years of chaos and... I don't know if I can really sort of answer that, I don't know how... how okay. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, a, there's quite a strong story about what happened with the band. Yeah, I mean, does it feel, I'm, I guess I, what I'm really trying to ask is I'm wondering whether it feels internally the way it looks externally, whether, you know, with each change in the lineup, it's like a different band, a different phase, a different feeling, or right. whether you don't sit in the same way, whether the key events to you are actually things that other people outside the band might not even have right. been aware of, you know. No, very much, no, I think, I, no, I, it, I think it does, if, if that's how the band seems, it seems to the outside, I think, yeah, that's very much how it seems to me, mm-hmm. you know, the kind of, pretty much the kind of line-up changes have sort of dictated phases for me, mm-hmm. you know, the, the early incarnation of the band before, before we had a record out, and then, you know, I, I see it very much as, uh, look at the pieces of what went to make up the band, and how they changed, and how it altered the music, things like Justine was in the band mm-hmm. very early on, and her departure kind of allowed us to become the band we were, with, mm-hmm. uh, with just me, Simon, Matt and Bernard. Mm-hmm. Um, going away from 
kind of feeling free to write very much sort of like song based quite emotional music mm -hmm. which kind of like before I suppose we didn't feel free to do Justine was very much um, w wanted to hear things that she thought were cool mm -hmm. rather than rather than were necessarily good mm -hmm. and I think our departure allowed us to kind of like uh, allowed us a certain sort of freedom which mm -hmm. which which mutated into Swag Mark One yeah um, and that unit was I think. I think pretty good actually. I think the band and the band Swag were were, were a, a very very exciting band, and I always think it's a shame that a tragedy that he left. To be honest, mm. Cause I think that we could have gone on to do something much more. I kind of felt as though there's a lot more gas left in the tank. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do see it as, as as phases like that, you know. And Bernard leaving inevitably led on to another phase where after what we've done with Dog and Star, which is very um, ambitious and grand sounding. Obviously, we wanted to kind of like do something in uh, in the opposite direction because you, you might make a quite an extreme sounding record. You kind of get, you kind of want to get out of your system quickly. Mm -hmm. By almost the antidote is an opposite sound record. Yeah. And from Dog Man Sounds coming up, I think it sort of de does sound like a very different sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was, that was kind of quite conscious. The sort of band we wanted to become. We wanted to write much more tight, sort of like, you know, rhythmic pop music, you know. Mm -hmm. And Bernard Leaving, I've never known its old history down, but I've never really read a, a proper explanation of that. An explanation? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the kind of, the truth of the matter is, uh, ultimately, that he wasn't happy being in the band. Mm -hmm. For whatever personal reasons, I don't know. To be honest, you'd kind of have to ask him, he had a lot of, his father was very ill. Um, and, uh, and I don't, to be honest, I can't ask this as answer for him why he wasn't happy being in the band, but the fact of the matter, he wasn't. And I think that ultimately he was looking for a way out of the band, and that manifested itself in him um, creating lots of power struggles. Mm -hmm. So the, the snapping point came with Dog Man Star. He was basically really unhappy with Ed Fuller's production of the album. Mm -hmm. And um, he gave me an ultima ultimatum saying either, either we sack Ed or I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And I called his bluff. N if I'd have thought that there was anything I could have done that would have kept Bernard in Swain, I would have done that thing. Mm -hmm. But I just assumed that even if you had even if I'd have, even if I'd have sacked Ed, it would have been something else. Something, the next thing would have been is either, either I go or Matt goes, mm -hmm. and then I go. I didn't think that uh, that that it would have solved anything. Mm. But I know it wouldn't solve anything. He just wasn't happy being in the band, which is kind of a tragedy to me because I, I I think the, the biggest tragedy of it all is I don't really think he appreciated how good the stuff we were doing was. Mm. Kind of feel as though he, he didn't really give it enough worth, which is a shame. But he just didn't want to be in the band at the end of the day. Wasn't happy with what we'd become, who we were. Who he was within that cell, and he wanted to go somewhere else, and so he never to be one. Mm. And it's difficult to see, and I'm not asking you to comment on this because why should you? But just to finish that, is, from what he's done since, it's hard to see what it is he wants to do. But uh, there we go. Mm. It's a shame. It is a shame, yeah. it's a real shame. But you know, when it happened, it was. You know, there wasn't anything I could do about it, there really wasn't. A lot of, a lot of people kind of oh, would say to me, oh, why didn't you do anything to keep Bernard? And I oh, answer is, yeah, I would have done anything to keep Bernard, but he was always going to leave. I kind of, I sort of felt that even very early on, even before we had a record, con record deal, there was always a sense that Bernard was kind of on his own and the other members of the band were formed with the rest of the band. Mm -hmm. um, which was a shame. But that's the way it is. I think sometimes the most exciting creative partnerships are, you know, short-lived. You know, look at something like Sex Pistols or something. You know, it's, there is something to be said for you know flashes of inspiration being quite powerful. Yes, yes, Sex Pistols is a good example because 
clearly. You can't imagine them having made a six out of them, can you? Well, clearly, <laughs> Sean and Lyle and Glenn Matlock couldn't stand each other. Yeah. And clearly, those were the two that wrote the great songs. And once Glenn left. Uh, well, that's the word, you know, it, it did, they were, they, they wrote such great songs because they were such opposites, weren't they? I mean, exactly. And Rotten was just into making it as objectionable and all. I think, you know, the opposites come together to. Uh, a certain amount of tension and, and, and you know, differences in relation in a creative relationship, I think, is kind of quite important. You know, you need to partners. The reason people become partners is because the other member offers them something they don't have in themselves. Mm -hmm. And when 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 fame happens to people and all of the ways in which personalities get distorted and magnified by that, mm -hmm. you know, the the natural differences between the two people just kind of like creates tension. I just think you need sort of like a certain amount. Of, uh, you need a romantic and you need a technician, and mm -hmm. those two things are so diametrically opposed that it's found to spend in tears. Mm. Now there's kind of a sense in which, well, it looks to me anyway, as though all this could have happened before the last album. You know, so when you do the singles and everything, you're sort of drawing a bit of a line over a period. Mm. And yet the last album seemed to be sort of, here's a new, well, as in the title, mm -hmm. you know. Does that, does that comment make any sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense, yeah. Um, the, the title of the last album was really more of a reference to where I was at personally, more than anything. Right. People often, I've, I've been asked that question about 30,000 times. When I'm doing... never said it was going to be original. No, 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 I'm, I'm just saying, there's one of the kind of, Questions, you know, we're there to be doing millions of yeah. sort of like interviews abroad and stuff like that. Yeah. Some Belgian journalists come up to me and say, Is that the, is it a new morning persuade? Mm -hmm. And the title of the album was, it, yeah, of course, there's a sense of, there's a sense of expectation about it, but it was, it was very much where I'm at personally, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the first record I've made without taking it, you know, being completely clean, mm -hmm. and it was very much a record about that coming back from the brink mm -hmm. of. of sort of oblivion which was head music for me. Mm -hmm. and it's more of a personal statement than a statement about the band. Mm -hmm. I guess I actually contradicted myself earlier when I was saying how there's a lot of connection, there's a lot of continuity within you. Yeah. But anyway, sticking to the same point anyway, there is a bit of a drawing line. Are we, are we expecting a sort of jump, what's going to happen with, the next, with a suede? With us, whence, not whence, with us, where are you going next? What's with us, next? Way. With us, wait, yes. Quite about it. Yeah, is there a, do we already know what's going to happen next? Is there a new direction? Is there a new sound? Is there a new. We've been thing? writing, we've been writing um, quite quite prolifically recently. Yeah. We were writing initially for um, for new tracks on this album, and yeah. we kind of ended up inevitably writing about sort of 10 tracks. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the, it's a lot more, it's a lot, most of the songs are about sex, mm -hmm. it's a lot of the, the very sort of sexual nature. They're quite nasty sounding, mm. quite, quite robotic sounding. Oh, shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> but you said we've been writing a lot recently. What's the writing process? Is that you sitting in the room with an acoustic guitar and then going back it goes like this? Or is it all with no. you sitting around with the equipment up and... These days, it's it's kind of... Uh, we, we, there are certain for formulas within it, you know. M my, probably, I always have like a main writing partner, you know, that has been Richard in the past, it has been Bird in the past. At the moment, the last couple of songs I've been writing a lot with Matt, actually. Mm -hmm. It tends to be, and Neil, I write a lot of that head music, so I do have a main writing part. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, this, it, I'm kind of a bit of a tart when it comes to kind of creating songs. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take it whatever way it comes, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If there's a, if I mishear someone singing something in the street, and mm -hmm. where, you know what I mean? It's like, a, mm -hmm. it's a matter of that, and, and, and however some comes, we could be just knocking something out, jamming in the rehearsal room, and we'll just hit on something, and I'll say, oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We'll do that. Or it could be me sitting on an acoustic guitar, or, you know, it's, it's not, for me it's not a matter of how, it, how inspiration comes, it's that it does come, and however, whatever form that takes. 
I think it's very early on, it was um, me and Bernard, and it was a very sort of like structured way in which we'd write songs. Mm -hmm. um, the first two albums were very much written in the same way Bernard would, uh, would come up with a chord sequence and a basic rhythm, and I'd write the lyrics and the vocal melody on top of that, and then we'd play as a band. It was very, The songs were very much kind of written before yeah. we started rehearsing them, but um, in the last few years it's been become a lot more fluid than that. And um, Phil said I should ask you about John Hurt in a skirt. Oh yeah, there's a video. About, do you want to see it? Yeah. I've got a video with John Hurt. Rhyming just about to one of our songs. Exactly where I was. Yeah, that's um, yeah, right. No, I just I'm really keen to do something that isn't just and in white room mining to some yeah. kind of just getting so fun. Yeah. Countless videos, just so soul destroying, yeah. utterly depressing. Just thought, well, quite nice. To